as you can probably tell from the title of this video, I watched the Borderlands movie, so you don't have to. And in advance, I'm going off script. I haven't written anything. This is off the dome. I'm going to be spoiling as much of this movie as I can to make sure that you don't watch it. And I'm going to talk a lot of shit about how bad this movie is. So let's just get into it. I watched it. Well, I didn't actually watch it like the, at the day of recording this video. I actually watched it on the weekend. I went on Saturday with the boys who are also very big Borderlands fans. And it was horrible. The movie was bad. Now, at first, when I watched it, I thought it was... A, I thought it was like a 4 or 5 out of 10. I didn't think the movie was as bad as people are putting it out to be. I mean, it debuted on Rotten Tomatoes at like a 0%, which was not surprising to say the least. But that was just critic reviews. And it and then it went up to 3% a bit after. But I don't think it's a 3% movie. It's like maybe 15, 20%. But yeah, I thought it was a 4 or 5 at first glance because I'm a Borderlands fan. I'm a big Borderlands fan. I've I've been growing up on these games since the very first series, very first title, Borderlands 1, which came out in 2009. And I've been a very big fan of the series for over 15 years. It has been that long since Borderlands started. It's crazy to think about. But I love this franchise. I love looter shooters. I love the characters. I love the universe. I love the game. I love the gameplay. That's probably the main thing, really. And obviously, story is something that is subjective for this type of series. But I know a lot of people do look up to Borderlands 2 as being one of the best video game stories ever made. Or better yet, one of the best video game villains of all time, Handsome Jack. So I understand that this film had a lot to live up to for both, you know, story fans and just fans of the series. But no, this film does not fucking live up to anything. It's not, it doesn't have a good story. It doesn't have the quintessential, one of the quintessential pillars, if you will, of this series, loot. Yeah, loot doesn't exist in this game. In fact, it's just, it's just a Vlad of Infinity pistol, which I got because it was a cool reference and I saw it, that was Lil's pistol. That was dope. There was some one, there was this one appearance on Marcus's like bus that had like a legendary weapon in it, but I couldn't get the name of it. Um, had no idea. And, and and that's it. There's just nothing to love about this movie. The more I try to find redeeming qualities of this movie, the worse my my number went. And it, as of right now, it's a fucking one out of ten. I wouldn't go the, this far to give it a three percent, but it's definitely like a one out of ten at least. I'm only giving it a one because of those subtle references I got as a Borderlands fan. As a non-Borderlands fan, I'd give this a zero, straight up. You have no idea what's going on. The story is horrible. There's no obstacles for these characters to overcome whatsoever. Everything felt rushed. The character, the casting. Oh, don't even get me started on the fucking casting. As soon as we saw, I saw that casting the day it dropped. I knew this movie was going to be a flop. A-list actors, Kate Blanchett playing Lilith, Jamie Lee Curtis as Tannis Roland, Ke Kevin Hart as Roland. Really? Few problems. Tannis and Lilith, voice actors, great voice actors. Horrible choice for them. They're both incredibly young. They're a lot younger in the games than they are in the movie. Jamie Lee's like, Jamie's like 60. Kate Blanchett's like 50 plus. So that's one problem I have with it already. Secondly, Roland, Kevin Hart. Roland's like 5'4". Kevin Hart's like 4'6". Or 4'5". I don't know what feet he is. He's definitely 4'. That's a problem. He's not supposed to be four foot. He's meant to be a lot taller. So that ruined that for me. And I mean, Tino and Krieg's um, casting is okay. I actually think the, I actually think Krieg, um, whatever his name is, I can't remember right now as I'm recording and I don't have it on my second monitor, but whoever, whoever he is, I got to give that guy props because he actually put on a show for Krieg and he's a big fan of the series as well. So I can tell from the way he played Creek, he's a big fan of the series. So shout out to that guy. Shout out to Jack Black too. I know Jack Black with movies, it's always like meant to be a W for the movie. But unfortunately, his character, he, him being in the movie isn't enough to save this film. It's not enough. He 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 also puts a lot of effort into Claptrap to make him as cringe and annoying as possible. Although I would argue that it's not on his fault that Claptrap is very annoying in the movie because he is way 
way more annoying than he is in the games. Um, and in general, I think for people that have never seen him, they'll probably find him fucking irritating because of all the all the shit he says. It's just, yeah, the jokes are just, they're not it, Chief. They're not it. They're not it. It's just, it's cringe. But yeah, him and Krieg were the only two that put a lot of effort to make the movie what it is. And for them, I give them res nothing but my respect. Everyone else, even Tina, I'll put it in there. Not so much. Not so much. Another problem I had too was Commander Knox. Why is why is she a female? Uh, General Knox in Borderlands is actually a male, and we got a female instead. Were there no were there no um, uh, options for a Knox that looks exactly like General Knox in Borderlands One? Was that the problem, or did we just simply make her a female because we had they had no other choice? Or maybe the board, maybe the Borderlands three writers gone into it and they were mid, they were writing the script midway through and said, you know what, I think I think Knox will be better as a female than a male. Let's go find a female actor and put her in. It's just, oh my god, this the casting in this movie is just horrible. It's horrible. Now in terms of finding redeeming qualities, you want a good story where the characters have to overcome obstacles in order to achieve their goal of finding and opening this vault. <laughs> not available you want an antagonist that that feels like they actually play their role so well that they put pressure on the characters to make them you know scared and worried and 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 have consequences like thanos and avengers <laughs> doesn't exist either you want characters that actually have developed backstories and show some form of vulnerability like our kratos and atreus do in god of war <laughs> doesn't exist either there's just nothing redeeming with this movie at all there's nothing there's nothing special about it there's nothing exciting about it there's nothing positive that i can say and and and, and i mentioned it before loot loot is quintessential for this for this series they go to the vault for fucking two minutes and there's nothing there there's no loot just a bunch of cubes and a subtle appearance of the destroyer for like five seconds of him getting of him eating up the the atlas ceo which is the antagonist i already forgot his name and that's it done that's the vault like i don't understand why they just didn't put like chess like i don't know it's another thing did they does randy pitchford or the people that worked on the movie think that loot isn't like like going to be funny do they think loot makes no sense in a movie because truthfully speaking, if if my video game series is about loot, I would go through the effort to put loot in there. Even the like the movie doesn't make sense anyway. Just fucking dump it in there to please the fans of the series. Like, you know, I get that they're trying to appeal to everybody, but at some point you gotta do some things that would only a appeal for certain audiences. I think if they went all out on the movie and just appealed for more of a a game audience than they did the general audience. It would have been so much better. I get it though. Appealing to the general audience is better because they get they get to uh, attract new fans and bring or bring you know bring new people into the world and series of Borderlands. Because you know every now and then on Reddit I see that you know people are asking whether to pick up the Pandora's box, which is on sale right now, I think. And yeah, you should pick up the Pandora's box. You know, on a side note, if you're thinking of getting the games, get the Pandora's box. Don't get it when it's not on sale. Wait till it goes on sale, then grab it. Because it is a steal. You get all the Borderlands games, excluding Wonderlands, because it's not related to the Borderlands games, technically. And you get so many hours of gameplay. So yeah, uh, I would recommend that. Anyway, there's just nothing to love with this movie. Another thing that I suggested that I talked about with my friends, and they agreed too, is a TV show. Much like how Fallout did it with the series. And Fallout's probably a good time to talk about too, because, you know, the Fallout series was is, is probably the best thing I've watched this year. And I don't really like to watch a lot of things on television or like or movies nowadays. Like majority of my time is spent me on me just either developing or just playing playing or making game videos on video games. And you know, to be able to consume a media like Fallout, which from the trailer it looked really good. Honestly, it looked so promising. And they murdered it out of the park. Excellent TV show, great characters, unknown actors too, which really helps to boost um, the universe and make it feel a bit more alive as opposed to having A-list actors like this fucking shit show. And 
it was and and they had enough time to be able to build on all the characters that were introduced to you you know maximus is a brotherhood of steel or like a aspiring brotherhood of steel member who's been who's had a rough past and He's one of those guys that pictures himself to be the brother to want to be in the Brotherhood of Steel, just like we all did when we played Fallout 3 growing up. You know? Um The Vault Dweller, oh my god, I I cannot remember her name right now. I'm I'm just gonna talk about her anyway though. Vault Dweller was fantastic. Great interpretation of her. Great way to kind of portray that character of just being out of the vault and just you know, introducing yourself to the wasteland that you've never seen for all these years growing up. And then, and then Walton Goggins himself, who plays the ghoul Cooper. He's the best character out of that show, but he also played that really well. Another great thing is that Fallout stuck to the source material. They never had any issues with, they, they kept it, they kept it law friendly. Borderlands movie is not law friendly. It arguably is, but it's not law friendly enough. There's not enough references. There's not enough stuff that we get. Like the first episode of Fallout showed so many things. The Brotherhood of Steel, the ships, the characters, the soldiers, or the, the power armor, the vault, the, the you know, the, the living in the vaults, the origins of Cooper Howard being this like star and, and seeing the world as it was before it went to shit. Just everything about it. So many references and little things that they, they, you know, if there was more references in the movie, I probably would have been a bigger fan, but there isn't. There's like fucking one or two references and that's it. The narrative of Borderlands is what kills me the most because there is, the, the narrative just goes all over the place. Just like the camera in this movie goes all over the place. It's fucking one moment, it's fucking shaking. The next it's like, it's like going up and down and, Oh, it's, oh, it's just so bad. It's so bad. My God. So they start the narrative with, you know, talking about the Iridians and the vaults. And that was really cool. It starts off with like a, with like a rescue mission from Roland where he's picking up Tina because Tina's meant to be like this chosen, um, this chosen one for the vaults. That's another thing I'll, I'll touch on in a moment. Then... Fast forward to Promethea, where Lilith is a bounty hunter and she gets offered a job she couldn't refuse, per se. That's basically what the gist is. She gets offered a fuck ton of money to go find Tina herself and return her. That's the job. Then it turns into this... The story just shifts from being the hunter to being the hunted because Lilith decides, Oh, fuck, I'm gonna help Tina. Fuck Atlas. I'm gonna help Tina instead. Like, right then and there, you could have turned her in, but you're like, nah, I'm gonna help her instead. It's So... It shifts from there, then onto the meat, the meat part of this narrative. Tiny Tina becoming, possibly being the siren or the chosen one to open the vault. It pissed me off the moment I first heard it, because Tiny Tina, in every shape and form that we've seen her, is not siren related. She's not. She doesn't have tattoos. She doesn't. She's never sported those powers. She's never even posed to have those powers the entire way through. From her being young to her being mature in BL3. Never had any assumptions or, or any of those like thoughts of, oh, I'm the chosen one. I can open this. I can do this. Again, it's not canon to the series, but it really pissed me off. Because if she was actually the siren, I would have thrown my popcorn at the fucking screen. Thankfully, it was not the case. It ended up changing to Lilith, who's actually technically the siren she, as, she, as she should be. It goes into this narrative exposition moment where she's at like her old town, which is like New Haven. She goes to her home. She gets an echo recording from her mother, talks to her about being this chosen one. Then next thing you know, she like develops the powers in a scale of five to 10 minutes when they're all getting like, when they're all in a very bad position. And boom, she, ha she, she has learned how to use these powers in a matter of minutes. Makes no sense to me. Still doesn't make sense to me now. Why can't we have more backstory on, on, on her being a siren or showing some of her powers early on before she tries to use them to help to help the characters? Like new new fans are gonna be like, what the hell just happened? I don't even know what just happened. I can understand why the movie is PG thirteen because kids won't even understand what the fuck's going on, and 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 for that they'll get money out of it. Plug that wire in, it might work. Which one? What color? I don't know. Red, white, 
yellow. They're all the same, aren't they? No, 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 mate. It's definitely the red one. I'm fucking, I'm fucking sure of it. Yeah, can you be sure when you're fucking jacked up on heroin? You fucking. I'm not fucking on heroin. Ah, uh, you, you, you fucked it. You fucked Law it. Guys, you gotta disconnect the electromagnetic wires from the mind prime to extract the densest gamma radiation. Oh, look, we got ourselves a fucking evolutionary physicist over here. Whoa, did all got all? They'll just be seeing like, whoa, that's so cool. N no, it's not cool. It's not. Oh, and another thing, the bloody VFX. The VFX for a hundred million dollar budget movie, you'd think the VFX would be superb, right? <laughs> it's not. It's fucking terrible. It's bad the whole way through. CGI is off the charts as being one of the worst implementations of CGI I've ever seen. Even the Matrix Revolutions has better CGI, and that's and I, I don't think that's a good Matrix movie by any means. In general, but the CGI in that is better than this movie. It's it's it, it boggles my mind. Maybe it's because of the director Eli Roth, who I don't think he's necessarily a bad director. I don't think he's the best director for this movie though. But then then again, going through his movie discography, and then when I heard it, when I see when I saw that he got assigned to make a Borderlands like movie, which is more about like comedy than anything else and action, it's like most of the time he makes horror movies, bro. Like, he shouldn't even be working on a movie like this. It makes no sense to me. But Randy just insist, probably insisted and said, Hey, you know, can you make this movie for me? I'll give you a lot of money for it. And he's like, fuck yeah, let's do it, bro. And that's what we got. We got this pile of dog shit in our, in our eyes. You know, I spent $25 watching this. I wish I could take it back. And, and I, I wish I could get a refund. But I know Marcus would be smiling up in the sky or in game and be like, no refunds. Because, you know, that's how he works. Just like this entire movie. So, yeah, no. It sucks. And those are my thoughts. I just wanted to briefly mention the drama too. Um, because Randy has been going on an absolute spree the last week since Borderlands came out. He actually blocked Killer6, who is a very big content creator. Because of his opinion on the movie where he said that it was just okay. And Randy got so butthurt by that because he's a fucking 13 year old CEO that doesn't know how to act like a 50 year old. And he decides to block him for being, because he has some sort of ego and just thinks that his opinion is irrelevant. Even Jolts made a video on, on the Borderlands movie. And I saw that as of today, uh, which is Tuesday for me, he's still following Jolts, but I think something happened to where he ended up blocking Jolts as well because of his opinions. And oh my God, Jolts' video, he... He torched the movie. He fucking torched it. And he should. He is a big fan of the series. For a movie that had $100 million put into it, he has every... And, and has profited himself off of it because of his YouTube content for Borderlands. Con, for Borderlands, He deserves to talk shit on that. He is arguably the biggest fan of Borderlands. Out of everyone that I know or that I've seen on YouTube, he's the biggest fan for sure. He also has a very big following for Borderlands content. Um, and community as well. So he deserves to torch that movie. And as of right now, I think it's got like maybe like over 350,000, maybe 400,000 views. And good on him. Because everything, every point that he made in that movie, I agree with. It's all, it's all, all facts. Because it's that shit. You know, and it, Randy, a message to you. If you see this video, fuck you. Fuck you for being pessimistic. Fuck you for being narcissistic. And fuck you for being a crybaby. Learn to be better. Learn to actually say that you take criticism and not seemingly block people because they're nasty and disgusting. And instead, take that like a man. And don't go out on Twitter saying that you accidentally blocked people. Because you're full of shit. I don't, I don't, I, that is so much cap. So no, don't go out and do that. It's, it's stupid. And yeah, that, that, that's it for the Borderlands movie. This movie is just, this movie is dog shit. I'd rather eat my own shit than watch this movie. Don't go, if you're a Borderlands fan, don't go out and spend your money. If you've never heard of the Borderlands series and are interested in watching this movie, do not watch it. Save your money. Go watch something else. Watch Fallout. Fallout is miles better than this. Just spend that $25 or whatever currency, whatever, however much it costs in your country, somewhere else. Because this movie ain't it. 1 out of 10. Horrible. That's it for me. Right, and um, I'll have more coming to you soon. Fuck this movie. Peace.